So, um, let's start this because I, we heard a lot about Kabash. Um, so this uh, lecture, this presentation will be uh, like a cut through of his, uh, his body of work. Um, and of course, uh, he, he, had a very, he had a very, very long life. So I, uh, I can't include anything. Uh, I mean, I, I can't, uh, can't in include, you know, uh, all, you know, his, his activities uh, because he had a very comprehensive body of work. Uh, tomorrow we will have the chance to, to see in my documentary film, uh, which will give, give you another kind of interpretation uh, what he did uh, from the 1930 and until the 1990s when he was active as an artist. So uh, the Greek word, uh, theoria, often uh, translated as theory, traces its roots back to the word thea, which means to see, to contemplate, and to reflect. Um, and this archaic usage, the word evolved uh, to encompass the sense of vision or visual perception. The Greek uh, philosopher Plato's frequently cited dialogue called uh, Siatis, uh, which seeks to answer the question, what is knowledge, concludes without, without a definite answer. The only consensus reached uh, is the necessity of distinguishing between the two forms of uh, perception. The dialogue's uh, participants, uh, Cietius and Socrates, conclude that these two forms of theory manifest in seeing from one side and looking into deep into things the other. In line with this, George Kepesh, the subject of my today's presentation, also believed, uh, by quoting him here, the cells of human vision and insight originate from a common root. When in the early 1950s, George Kepesh was commissioned by the Container Corporation of America to illustrate uh, a wise saying of a great uh, philosopher the artist depicted the final words of the condemned Socrates. Given that Socrates' ancestors were, were sculptors, Kepesh incorporated a relief adorned with an amphora and an engraved stone slab into the artwork. The sarcophagus uh, slab bears a Greek inscri uh, inscription, the name of Plato in Greek, and uh, accompanied by selected lines from Socrates' defense speech. Kepesh explained the painting by stating that Socrates, whose works were uh, preserved for uh, posterity, thanks for, uh, to Plato, saw his mission as uh, the pursuit of knowledge leading to a virtuous, virtuous life. Socrates and his disciples saw, saw uh, truths through, uh, truth through dialectical inquiry, engaging in dialogue with each other. The philosopher's method was built on unraveling polarities, dedicating his life to acquiring humanity and wisdom. He believed that a person could discern between good and evil, true and false, only if uh, their knowledge restored on solid, solid foundations. This line of reasoning, uh, exploring the interplay between observation and cognition, appears to serve as a suit, suitable, su suitable introduction to illuminate George Kepesh's aesthetic accomplishments. Kepesh was a Hungarian-American artist, a pioneering figure, a heterodoxic thinker, and one of the shapeshifters of media art in the 20th century. Not the first and only one, but probably the most fiercest uh, of those who suggested the idea to combine art with science, to dovetail seeing with thinking, or in his own words, the interseeing and the interthinking aspects and capabilities that we all possess. The Compton Lecture Series was established in 1957 to honor the late Carl Taylor Compton, who served as the president of MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, from 1930 to 1948. Kepesh, who was elected as uh, institute professor of the School of Art Architecture and Planning at MIT, as the first and only person who won that title up until today, was invited in 1975 
to participate as a lecturer in the prestigious Compton series. In his address, uh, the presenter, uh, by praising Capuch's life and work, he ended his introduction with the following uh, words. And this is the audio that we are hoping to uh, listen to. I don't know if uh, it goes through to Zoom? No? OK, let's, let's skip that. Uh, but I think George just provided a wonderful introduction uh, to Capesh. <laughs> so that was the introduction of today, and that was the introduction of Capesh in uh, 1975, uh, when he had the Compton lecture. So we can just skip this. But the main uh, <clears throat> uh, point about uh, the presenter uh, uh, introduced Capesh uh, was this sentence, how to design a car that can make friendship with a tree. So that was like a, kind of an emblematic, uh, an iconic uh, saying um, uh, by Kepesh, which uh, was really uh, uh, like far out uh, that, that time in the, in the 70s, this statement uh, that he had. Uh. So how uh, to design a car that can make friendship with a tree? Uh, this quote uh, can be easily translated as, uh, as the pro proverb uh, of George Kepesh. It consists of two uh, diametrically opposite, uh, in a way contradictory elements, art and science, design and technology, nature and the man-made world. As an illustration here, uh, I show you a picture taken of James R. Killian, the president of MIT between 1949 and 1959, who served as the head of the committee that was in charge of the US missile program for President Eisenhower, and he also served as his uh, personal science uh, advisor. During the time of uh, his position, uh, the only decoration he had at his MIT office was a large abstract painting by Kepesh that was hanging on the wall. A canvas that was de depicting a tree trunk over, overgrown with branches and the ground vegetation unfolding beneath it. This beautiful landscape with a romantic quality conjured up something else that would uh, reflect on Killian's profession. It seemed like uh, an anomaly, an incongruous uh, element within the workspace of a scientist whose expertise centered around the United States nuclear arsenal. Or cities are or collective self-portraits, images of hollowness and chaos. And if not properly guided or immensely potent technology, may carry with uh, itself curses of even more awesome proportions. The yet not understood uncontrolled dynamics of scientific technology could do more than poison or earth. It is capable of wrecking havoc on man's ge uh, genetic nature. This quote is uh, from the preface of George Kepesh's work titled Arts of the Environment. This book served as the seventh and final supplementary volume of the Vision and Value series, which Kepesh edited in the mid-1960s, and uh, as the last independent volume was published in 1972. During this period, Kepesh had been serving for several years as the director of the Center for Advanced Visual Studies that he founded in 1967. He collaborated with uh, the recipients of uh, his fellow fellows in uh, organizing exhibitions that attempted to explore the environmental extension of media arts. The integration of art in, into uh, everyday life through technology was the motto and the focus of his center, which uh, functioned under the auspices of uh, the MIT uh, School of uh, Architecture and Planning. In 1977, the documentary film uh, titled Center Beam which showed a project realized by Kepesch's Center at the Documenta in Kassel, Germany, the world's most significant and largest contemporary art venue, highlighted the research conducted at the Center. Um, and its opening caption as uh, something that uh, predicated in the belief that art is a force shaping our environment. George Kepesch's interest in the visual phenomena of the environment, the city, and the urban landscape, however, dates back to a much earlier period. 
The German art historian and expert of uh, the history of the Bauhaus, Otto Stelzer, in the postscript of Laszlo Mohli Nagy's uh, English translation of the 1925th uh, book Painting, Photography, Film, argued that the display of military camouflage studies mounted in the School of Design by George Kepesh was at once the first op art exhibition, Trompe l'oeil and its theoretical constituent. Uh, this was a quote by uh, Stelzer, postscript of uh, Mohorinat's uh, painting, uh, photography, uh, film. The study of uh, optical principles, the aesthetics of vision and perception, and their application in industrial design began in the early 20th century, particularly in the field of applied arts education. These studies found a place in the curriculum of the German Bauhaus School, not notably in uh, the pre preliminary, preliminary course, thanks to figures like Johannes Itten and jo uh, Josef Augers. However, it was truly pioneering for these studies to be applied beyond the walls of an uh, educational institution in practical settings. This uh, breakthrough uh, occurred through, uh, through the camouflage course uh, taught by Kepesh in Chicago at the School of Design, uh, the successor institution of the new Bauhaus between 1940 and 1942. Fearing uh, uh, um, retaliation for the bombing of the rural region in Germany and also in Tokyo, Japan, discussions uh, about sec securing, uh, securing the air defense of the city of Chicago emerged as early as the summer of 1942. On May 8, uh, the Chicago Daily News reported that the city uh, administration had proposed the development of a colossal $100 billion uh, camouflage plan. According to the newspaper, the students at the School of Design had already begun camouflage studies on drawing boards, exploring various color combinations, distortion uh, optics, in-depth study of light and shadow effects, designing fog and smoke patterns, and conducting several other undisclosed confidential experiments. The school's director, Laszlo Moholy Nagy, and the instructor, George Kepesh, suggested enveloping the city in a cloud of fog. The artist proposed uh, to the civil defense that every house supervisor uh, on the south side of the city be equipped with uh, the appropriate chemicals for camouflaging the steel mills, allowing them to generate steam instantly by adding chemicals to the uh, boilers. <coughs> Far furthermore, they suggested replicating the downtown area, known as the Loop, on, bar on barges placed on the Lake Michigan, covering the desired camouflaged area with painted canvas. The city administration expected Kepesh to propose how, how to eliminate the glow of uh, the steel mills from the city's night view. According to the newspaper article, Kepesh Laboratory experiments confirmed that uh, the glowing red lights of the mills could be nearly eliminated by illuminating the building with green spotlights, which as the, as the complementary uh, to, uh, to red, would effectively canceling out the red glow. Um, and so only, only student notes, descriptions, photographs, and, uh, and uh, uh, a 60 millimeter film footage in color did remain of these experiments. However, as we know, due to the further outcome of the war, they were never executed or practically applied. In the same year, when Kepesh conducted uh, his experiments with camouflage technologies using colored light beams, the German uh, psychiatrist uh, Gold, uh, Kurt Goldstein went beyond Wolfgang Goethe's uh, theories, more specifically Goethe's uh, 1810 subjective color chart, and drawing uh, from his uh, clinical observations suggested that color triggers psychological responses in the body, affecting people's emotions, cognitive concentrations, and motor behavior. Goldstein uh, discovered that red and yellow evoke forceful action in humans, while green and blue are associated with relaxing, calm, and stable responses. These uh, initial uh, investigations uh, underscore the idea that colors prompt specific reactions in the human brain, shaping cognitive, cognitive responses. 
In Goldstein's essay, the observation described uh, served as a stimulating source for Kepesh, when in his book Language of Vision, he connected visual perception solely to the brain, separating it from the other senses. For Kepesh, vision meant to the structure uh, many pulability of an image with light. The appeal of light as a creative aesthetic uh, medium to Kepesh was likely because he perceived it as a phenomenon that fused vision and knowledge into a common synthetic unity, creating a connection between uh, human senses. To function in his fullest scope, man must restore the unity of uh, his experiences so that he can register sensory, emo emotional, and intellectual dimensions of uh, the present in an invisible whole, uh, proclaimed Kepesh in his 90, 1944 book. Visual representations that were aptly capturing this line of thinking were, as we will see later, pretty much intertwined uh, with Kepesh's body of work. Here, um, I'm showing you one of Kepesh's murals uh, in Dallas, completed in 1968 uh, uh, on the Main Street in the downtown area, the St. Jude uh, Chapel. This mural consists of approximately 800, uh, 800 abacus styles made of Venetian style fused glass and metal oxide mixture, also known as Tessera tiles. Kepesh's mural portrays the glory of the Son of God from whom uh, comes life and uh, sustains, uh, as its description uh, suggests in the, in the commission. In fact, uh, Kepesh created a very similar visual rep representation focusing on the interplay of color and light that we can find in an earlier illustration in the history of art, namely in the case of uh, Barant uh, Condors van Helpens. Alchemical uh, Treatise, published in uh, 1689 uh, under the title Color, depicting the sun. In this picture, light and heat seem to be uh, prerequisites for uh, various forms of growth. The acronym Color, standing for the al Almighty Creator of Light, rules over, the, uh, all, rules over all things in Latin, underscores uh, the significance of light in the sustaining forces of life. The first uh, concept Kepesh uh, developed to make light art as a democratic medium, something that every one of us can access, can share, or benefit from, a concept that defined light as a universal emblem, an elusive but due to uh, its power a solid and eternal form, and the ultimate icon representing the commonalities in our life, was an idea of a museum dedicated to light. In the 1950, 1950 uh, January issue of the Interior magazine, a monthly journal for design published in the US, Kepesh came up with some utopian looking sketches and he gave the following explanation to them, uh, quote, I believe that it would be nice to have a building in which all facts connected with light and, and space could be demonstrated. This I would do not as an exhibition superimposed on an architectural framework, but as an architectural layout, which itself is the exhibited material. The building includes a perspective tower of many distorted planes to illustrate the illusion, illusions of linear perspective, undulating walls, varied textures, and sculpture, all illuminated, illuminated uh, by changing colored light." Unquote. To advocate for the universal quality of light as uh, the intermediary between uh, the man-made nature and the real nature, Kepesh was chosen to design the exhibition Art of the United Nations at uh, the Art Institute in Chicago in 1944, serving as the, as the installation supervisor. This exhibition held at the Art Institute was the first uh, artistic event ever realized under the auspices of the newly established United Nations. One of the most well-known pieces of the Art Institute, the French neo-impressionist painter, uh, Georges Seurat's uh, Grand Jatte, was dismantled and reframed by Kepesh and put it in a white, modest lattice frame. 
The white frame was then, then duplicated and put on the floor in a way that each of its painted elements were substituted with a, with a real natural form, contouring up the landscape, what the actual picture represent, represents or could represent in a tactile sense. As one of the visitors noted, uh, quote, it was a little plot laid out, a garden ending in a trough of Google uh, Google-eyed fishes, unquote. A uh, re reconstructed uh, Sura painting by Kapesh with uh, sections of uh, soil placed uh, in containers viewed uh, from above appeared as it were a miniature model of a terrain. It, res it resembled a simulation of a topographical board used by the military, such as uh, for simulating the camouflage of a military base. The trans position of the structure of the painting, the network of color dots, lines, and other elementary patterns of the composition into a three-dimensional object was not only used, unusual, but represented a completely unique solution in the history of, of vis visual research um, in the formalist uh, structure-based interpretation of artworks. It almost seemed like uh, as, uh, though Kepesh, as though Kepesh wanted to decode the algorithm of the painting and uh, transfer it into a virtual data cloud. Now, um, if we go back to Kepesh's Chicago camouflage experiments mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, we can probably conclude that uh, the resemblance between the exhibition installation and the military camouflage designs are, both uh, by Kepesh, uh, really striking. Kepesh's uh, appointment as a camouflage instructor was, uh, however, attributed to his educational activities rather than the practical application of the technique. As I learned from his former colleagues and also from his own daughter, Kepesh did actually not drive a car or ride a bicycle. He did not have a television at home until his retirement, and he was unable to, for instance, replace a burnout light bulb on his own. Kepesh was a man of contradictions, becoming one of the most significant pioneers of media art by being technologically somewhat incompetent. <laughs> but without the, this uh, discrepancy, I would argue, he wouldn't get that far with his own art. Kepesh's work was about pushing, pushing the boundaries, the attraction and repulsion of two, of two poles. His compositions vividly represent the dichotomy between uh, the Apollonian plastic forms, the one side, and the Dionysian playful liber uh, liberality, the other. This duality, uh, this duality served as the structural framework for Kepesh, as seen uh, in these uh, photographs, uh, where strict geometrical mathematical forms engage in a dialogue with the lyrical, the the patch-like and the abstract organ. Kepesh used this uh, dualism as uh, the foundation for his images. What Kepesh achieved was uh, the reconciliation of uh, the opposites uh, typically associated with art versus science, making these two entities interdependent on each other. Um, in this case uh, here, what is, uh, what, is uh, what is going on in this painting, he, for example, teared out a page from uh, an, eight, uh, an 18th century compendium on crystallography and uh, juxtaposed uh, the geometric mathematical patterns against the uh, volatile organic formations, the grids and uh, splashes uh, in, in, his, in his canvas on the left side. So this kind of procedure uh, includes the materiality of art in terms of uh, physical volume versus the tactile experience and sensitivity to a new technology. In other words, this can also be defined as the binary algorithm of the two cultures, the humanities versus the sciences. To bring uh, this a step further, I would argue that uh, the same logic was embedded in the book uh, that Kapesh wrote and edited in 1956, based on his five years earlier exhibition held at the Hayden Gallery at MIT. Uh, uh, so at the Hayden Gallery was the exhibition space uh, of MIT uh, during uh, this time. And he titled this show, 
uh, the new landscape in, uh, in art and science. It was an art historian at Stanford University, John Blakinger, who first discovered that Kapash's dialectical, dialectic visual thinking, his associations are also present in the only color spread that was printed for the New Landscape book, which presents a photomicrograph of a penicillin and a crystalline, and a crystal, crystalline film of a hexide. The latter, the, this latter material, the hexide, is an explosive chemical compound which mixed with TNT for the use uh, in high power military grade weapons. And uh, it is extremely poisonous matter even before combustion. Uh, and by placing the image of uh, the hexide against the image of the penicillin, the miracle antibiotic, Kepesh distilled his uh, dialectical method in a single spread in uh, a book that reflected the macro and the microcosmic aspects of the laboratory taken scientific images and their aesthetic uh, configuration. It is also, also symbolic, I think, that uh, during the organization of uh, the New Landscape exhibition in the early 1950s at MIT, where uh, Kepesh is uh, thought, um, had a course uh, titled Art Education for Scientists and Engineers. As a painter who taught at uh, uh, one of the world's most renowned technological universities, Kepesh found it evident to, to treat scientific and artistic images as inseparable. With uh, this, he initiated an enduring and inex uh, inexhaustible trend that was still out of fashion in, uh, in his time. Here um, I'm showing you a later work by Kepesh titled uh, The Magnetic Fields that was created in collaboration with physicist and engineer Bill, Bill Parker, the inventor of the plasma probe. The artwork which uh, ventures into bringing invisible sounds to life through optical pro uh, projection is highly in uh, interesting because it is likely one of the earliest attempts to apply nanotechnology in art. Visitors could play uh, the desired rhythm on a drum equipped with uh, sensitive uh, solenoid uh, coils, electrostatically include, uh, inducing the magnetic fluid behind the projector. Similar to a macroscope lens, the pattern set in motion magnified the processes occurring on a microscopic level in a thousand-fold scale. What I, what I wanted to show you uh, next is uh, related to the immediate uh, repercussion of Kapesh's new landscape exhibition. In 1951, simultaneously with Kapesh, Richard Hamilton, who became known as a central figure uh, in the British pop art, organized an exhibition at the London Institute of Co uh, Contemporary Arts titled uh, Growth of Form. This exhibition was uh, accompanied by a symposium convened by uh, Lancelot L. White, a Scottish physicist who also published in Kepesh's books uh, later on. So Hamilton uh, must have been aware of Kepesh's uh, previous and years, although he probably haven't seen uh, his exhibition at, at MIT. In the review of the Gross and Form show that was opened by the architect Le Corbusier, who was attending a conference in London at that time, the Burlington magazine pointed out uh, quite clearly, clearly, and uh, I'm, I'm quoting uh, here uh, the author who published this article at the Burlington. Instead of sending uh, their members to the Natural History Museum, they have now dedicated themselves to, play, uh, to, to display what appealed to their organizers' aesthetic sense or seemed to uh, them related to modern art. George Kepesh's new landscape, or at least fragments of it, unquote. So Richard Hamilton, uh, by incorpor incorporating the embryologist uh, Lancelot Low White's idea of scientific uh, philosophy of form, was uh, seeking to realize something that was close to Kepesh's concept of the unity of spatial entities in uh, the complex uh, process of physics, biology, psychology, and art. The exhibition catalog for Hamilton's show in London was published in the same year under the title Aspects of Form. Uh, if you can see a book cover on the right. 
And uh, while most of, the, of the, the contributions focused on scientific phenomena of form, analogy, and self-similarity, art historian Herbert Reed explicitly pointed out uh, the, par the parallels to the visual arts in the preface. And I'm quoting uh, Herbert Reed here. The increasing significance given to form or pattern in various branches of science has suggested the possibility of certain parallelism, if not identity, in the structures uh, of natural phenomena and of uh, authentic works of art. His conclusion, uh, Herbert Ray's conclusion, uh, was as follows, and uh, I'm quoting him here again. Aesthetics is no longer an isolated science of beauty, and science can no longer neglect aesthetic factors." Unquote. Um, so Kepesh's theory of the metabolism of the image, so to speak, uh, can be traced back, at least according to my study, to uh, structure-based thinking with its roots uh, in biomorphic uh, modernism. The most significant representative, uh, representative in this field were artists or thinkers working in the Bauhaus environment, including art historian Erno Kallai, or Ernst Kallai, who served uh, as the editor of the magazine of the German Bauhaus School. Around 1930, um, Kallai develop, developed uh, his uh, theory called bioromantics, which focused on finding parallels between abstract visual artworks and micro and, micro and macro photographic uh, images. A very similar notion was advocated by Kepesh in one of his lectures he had in 1947 at the Institute of Design in Chicago, which functioned as the last of, uh, outpost of the so-called diasporic Bauhaus, uh, a term that uh, I suggested a few years ago in a conference. In there, uh, Kepesh argued uh, that the organizers are certain cells charged with uh, forms as an electric battery in charge with electricity. These charges guide, guide the growth of the organism. But uh, the legacy of the Bauhaus was crucial for Kepesh also in another aspect. Just as the German schools program thought, thought uh, to explore and exploit uh, connections between design uh, and art, Kepesh also viewed uh, technolog technology as a kind of uh, prosthesis a tool that, in his view, could restore the, few, the full life of humanity. In an interview, he re referred to uh, homeostasis uh, as an example, describing it as a cybernetic system that he chose as uh, a reference to explain and highlight the interaction between art and technology, as well as the functional relationship between objects and the living world. Homeostasis, uh, as we know, is a self-regulating process by which a living organism can maintain internal stability by adjusting uh, the changing external uh, conditions. Uh, so this picture here uh, is just an illustration uh, and uh, unrelated to Kepesh, uh, but shows the so-called uh, homeostat, uh, one of the first devices capable of adapting itself uh, to the environment uh, and it was designed in 1948 by William Ross Asby in the UK. Um, so here I'm quoting Kepesh's view on the homeostasis. Um, I, uh, wrote Kepesh, try to borrow an analog from the psychological biological responses of the body to challenge for, from the art inside, expressed uh, Kepesh, and he did also add. When the body is overheated, when the temperature is going beyond the body, the, the body comfort, we are shivering, so this mechanical automatic uh, move, uh, movement of the body to regain some heat, a similar uh, thing happens on a cultural, social level too. When the social body overheated, it has to cool off. When the social body is shivering, it implies that uh, there is some missing warmth, unquote. By following the notion of the Gestalt psychologist, uh, Kepesh, Kepesh saw the field force of a, a structure such as the optical hierarchy of a picture field or a larger visual entity as a pattern that went beyond itself and traced back to uh, some uh, state of self-organization. In essence, uh, at least in my uh, interpretation, Kepesh identified the power of art uh, with a message 
that was hidden in aesthetically formed generative formations. He, de he declared in his uh, 1944 book, uh, The Language of Vision, by reflecting on the familiar insight from Gestalt theory, that uh, he codes of uh, visual communication cannot be broken down into linear and sequential units, like words in language of, uh, or writing. Instead, uh, the coding and the decoding of visual messages are done seeing as a whole in, according, in accordance with Gestalt properties. These include proximity, grouping, clo closure, similarity, dissimilarity, continuity, proportion, or rhythm. For Kepesh, breaking down an image similar to uh, the language, breaking down into sentences, words, and uh, syllables, was necessarily uh, was necessary to de determine the regularities of uh, visual syntax. syntax. Um, for a promotional uh, pamphlet uh, titled Illustration, published in 1941, Kepesh produced a striking drawing. His image shows loose pages patterned with essential form, formal uh, elements of uh, modern art, like points, uh, lines, shapes, and shadows, or what Kepesh called visual fundamentals, appeared to cast rays of light that uh, penetrate an eyeball. Reflected through uh, the cornea, uh, these beams imprint an inverted image on the retinal surface. The illustration outside the eye is mirrored within it. Kepesh's diagram presents an inventory of uh, compositional uh, groupings re resembling iconic styles from the historical avant-garde, even a page from one of Kepesh's own work uh, that we can see here uh, in, the, in the bottom. Uh, it is suggested here that the grammar and the syntax of pictorial organization is dependent on the seeing eye and the interpreting mind. The power of the eye, that was uh, Kepesh's Ars, uh, so the power of the eye uh, became uh, Kepesh's Ars Poetica. His name was uh, synonymous uh, with the human origin, organ of uh, seeing. No wonder why Alexander Calder, the sculptor, for example, addressed, uh, addressed a postcard to Kepesh with an all-seeing an all eyeball on the side of the address seat. This very simple pictographic sign uh, is an emblematic manifestation of Kepesh's ideas, his role as a visual thinker in the post-war visual culture. Kepesh frequently used various charts to aid the, the understanding of uh, the, the structure of, uh, of vision. He considered the exhibition as a format to, the, to be a holistic model in which, he, which the visitors and uh, their environment should form a common unity. One of his charts examined uh, the, de the degree of spectator involvement. He marked uh, the parts of the installation plan in purple, where the dialogue between the viewer and the artwork is most critical, and in green, where it is the less, less, uh, or least active. Kepesh's interest uh, in the perceptual uh, experiments utilized his research on the spatial extension of vision when he be uh, began exploring how to interpret the city, not just, an, not just an urban form, but also in an optical topology. His research at the MIT School of Architecture and Planning focused on a new mosaic word, coined uh, from the phrases uh, legibility and visibility, termed as imagibility. Building on this concept, Kapesh approached urban space, uh, psycho the urban space psychologically from the perspective of the senses and memories, believed that residents are bound together not by the city's physical form, but by its uh, mental image. His research uh, project uh, titled Perceptual Form of the City was awarded, awarded the Rockefeller Foundation Fellowship in 1954, allowing for the subjective study of the mental image of three American cities, Boston, Jersey City, and Los Angeles, from the viewpoint of their residents. This was the first work uh, in the history of architecture that developed uh, the theory about the form of the city based on personal uh, cons uh, consultations with its inhabitants, and it was one of the earliest attempts to challenge the hierarchical do doctrine of modernist urban planning developed in the preceding 30 years. 
The idea of uh, perceiving the city as a continuous, constantly moving kinetic form was evident in many of Kakashi's public works. For example, a light mural he designed in uh, 1959 for the Royal Dutch Airlines, the KLM, was erected in uh, Midtown Manha Manhattan in New York next to the Rockefeller Center at the intersection of the 49th Street and the Saks Fifth Avenue. In a report uh, financed by the Shell oil, com oil Company for the magazine Progressive Architecture in 1960, it was stated that uh, Kapesh's piece, uh, quote, is believed to, uh, believed to be the first attempt to create a vibrant and dynamic panorama of light, color, and motion using contemporary tools and techniques, unquote. In, uh, in Kepesh's own words, uh, and I quote him again, what I tried to do uh, was to catch the feeling that one gets from, his imme from this immense, one may say, double exposure of the cosmic and the man-created wonders, unquote. So, um, in, keeping with the first, uh, in keeping with the fact that this mural was uh, commissioned by an art airline, airline company, the theme of the work was the cosmic dimension uh, of the flight, the cinematic spectacle of the city of New York, illuminated from above like a vibrant arabesque. It, it recreated the air traveler's experience when looking down on the metropolis at night. Over 50 feet long and 18 uh, high, Kapesh's KLM mural was basically a gray aluminum screen with some 60,000 random perforations and larger cut uh, cutouts. The sources of light uh, were a bank of spotlights and in, in, uh, incandescent and fluorescent uh, bulbs and tubes behind the surface. They were controlled by timing and switching devices that ac uh, activated the circuits. The purpose was to create a fluid luminous pattern exhibiting random change and continuous tra transformation of color intensity and pattern. In order to avoid the mechanical uh, repetition inherent in a mechanized device, many thousand different color filters were scattered freely behind uh, the perforations. Kapesh's mural sought to represent the dialogue between two overlapping qualities, the stable and unstable, the el elusive and uh, uncertain, the maintenance of uh, a rhythmic interplay between a constant and a changing pattern. As an underlying design concept, he used the algorithm for the randomness of the pseudo numerical symbol system, Kvipu, which he had read about in a book uh, written by the anthropologist Franz Boas. On the Paracas Peninsula, uh, in what is now no, uh, modern day Peru, the rule of uh, maintaining a rhythmic inter uh, interaction between a constant and an alternating pattern was used in the making of wo woven cloth, which survived from the pre Inca civilization in the 5th century. So, in a way, uh, this ancient, uh, more than 15th century old design idea was incorporated in uh, Kapesh's uh, KL. Kepesh's approach uh, characterized uh, by the intersection between various media and the representation of a traditional iconographic system that he combined and performed uh, with uh, cutting edge tools. The Canadian philosopher uh, Marshall McLuhan discovered in uh, George Kepesh's Kalem Mural the emergence of a previously unknown art form, the electronic landscape, uh, as he termed and wrote uh, about the work as follows in his 1964 book, Understanding Media, uh, co uh, quoting Marshall McLuhan. From the air uh, at night, the seeming uh, chaos of the urban area manifests itself as a delicate embroidery on a dark velvet ground. George Kepesh has developed these aerial effects uh, of the city at night as a new art form of uh, landscape by light uh, through, rather than light on. His new electric landscapes uh, have complete uh, congruity with uh, the TV image, which also exists by light through rather than by light on. Unquote. We are not far from the truth if we could conclude that Kepesh conceived the image of the city as an abstract painting uh, with certain focal points, a set of geometrically defined concrete layers overlaid uh, with a flourishing patch-like structure. 
he uh, Kepes regarded the city as a living organism, much uh, like his own uh, paintings that uh, depicted the rich and colorful uh, vegetation of, uh, of Cape Cod uh, in Massachusetts, his uh, immediate uh, environment. Um, from, the, from the 1940s on, Kepes uh, spent uh, uh, actually every summer there in his studio in Bell Street at the Cape. Um, here, one of his uh, painting titled uh, City at the uh, San Francisco Museum of Modern Art Collection. Uh, not just uh, nature, but uh, specifically the garden as a symbol, uh, the human connection uh, with the outside world became a defining element in Capuch's art. In collaboration with one of his students at MIT, James Tagger, Capuch presented a public sculpture titled Sound Oasis in 1969. If realized, this uh, circle island uh, divided into concentric zones with a diameter of uh, 200 feet, equipped with uh, sophisticated sound technology to eliminate uh, echoes, would have been uh, placed in a busy intersection of the city. The clear purpose was to allow people entering the artwork to temporarily escape the noise of the urban space through uh, synthetically, synthetically created nature sounds, such as water splashing, bell uh, chimes, uh, and etc. This project illustrated the inseparable unity of the organic and the artificial, the living and the human made into an uh, interconnected or organic whole. When in 1970, Kepes published a study uh, titled uh, Toward Civic Art, um, he actually habit habitually use the term civic uh, instead of uh, public. In the catalog of the exploration exhibition he curated at MIT, he did uh, not attempt to adapt cybernetics uh, to art on a mechanical basis, but rather approached the cybernetism as an organic concept involving dynamic forces and feedback loops. And uh, this organic approach to see nature, to look, to look at our surrounding as an ever-changing living matter that we can alter, modify, and recreate was Kepesh's driving force in his further aesthetic in the years, by uh, quoting Kepesh. We seek uh, equilibrium, the, op the optimum condition possible in our circumstances. In, uh, individually and collectively, men are self-regulating systems. An engineer who, uh, who designs a self-regulating system must learn to synchronize error and correction of error in order to avoid hunting excessive uh, oscillation about uh, his target point. Central to a self-regulating system is the notion of feedback or to express it more generally interdependence." Kepesh was fascinated by the view of wires that initially turned yellow and orange and finally glowed, uh, glowed in a radiant bright red. As uh, the roads became hot, uh, the background lighting gradually diminished, and uh, as they began to cool down again, uh, and the warm uh, colors uh, lost uh, their intensity, the room lighting uh, increased. In, in Kepesh's uh, work here, uh, the glowing columns that uh, was first exhibited uh, uh, and commissioned actually for, for his uh, major show at the uh, Museum of Science in Boston in 1973. Uh, in 1970, uh, a few years uh, earlier, uh, Kepesh uh, created an interactive installation titled Photoelastic 4 for uh, the above mentioned exploration ex exhibition that he uh, curated together with his uh, fellows at, uh, at MIT at the Center for Advanced Visual Studies. The rainbow colored pathway, serving as a mon monumental bridge, ran through the gallery in an L shape. The installation, equipped with uh, sensor technology and polycarbonate uh, floor ties, featured uh, fluorescent lights behind polarized screens. The color of the lights uh, changed, creating a light contour in response to the steps of people walking, strolling, or jumping on it. There was also a suggestion that individual color impulses uh, could be accompanied by corresponding sounds uh, based on their rhythm. Chromatic stimuli created rainbow-like patterns through the dialogue between the artwork and the, interaction, uh, and the interacting uh, uh, audience with the intensity of the pressure triggering the release of these patterns. But the 
synesthesia of the visual, the tactile, and the auditive perception channels can uh, also be found in other works by uh, uh, other works uh, designed by Kepesh. All our senses, sight, uh, hearing, touch, taste, smell, temperature, uh, sensitivity, balance, uh, kin uh, kinesthesis, are elementary. We are creatures of evolution with sense organs that are naturally responsive only to those, uh, to those aspects of nature that once were significant for biological survival. Um, ex explicated Kepesh uh, in uh, one, of his, uh, one of his texts. If we leap back uh, a few decades and re review George Kepesh's photographs uh, from the Chicago New Bauhaus period, it becomes, uh, it becomes apparent uh, that even there, uh, in the 19, end of 1930s, uh, beginning of the 1940s, he created works that played on multiple registers of human perception in a synesthetic way. George Kepesh captured the portrait of the eye and the ear through the descriptive and objective medium of photography, shedding light on the syne uh, synthetic uh, nature, uh, sorry, synesthetic nature of his ideas about vision. Here um, I'm screening you a few images of his work, uh, The Flame Watcher, which was a collaborative piece featuring uh, six square units uh, holding uh, glass containers and audio speakers that played music by the electroacoustic composer Paul Earth which vibrated the flames uh, produced by the gas. Kepesh's piece was uh, exhibited on several occasions, among, uh, among others in 1975, in, the Vancouver, uh, in Vancouver, the Vancouver Gallery of Art, where it was first exhibited as uh, part of the pioneering sound sculpture exhibition that was focusing on the uh, synesthesia in the visual arts. In the process to find out where the holes for the gas jets uh, should be placed. Uh, actually, Kepesh used a visual system that based on the so-called Kladni figures, uh, uh, 18th century technique that classified and emulated the various types of vibrations. To install and combine modules together of the flame or chart, Kepesh was seeking to expand, uh, expand this idea to the environment. But uh, the one of the most uh, most iconic representations of Kepesh's research he conducted with light as a creative medium in the urban space uh, that I would term light, light detector, uh, an area uh, where Kepesh excelled as both a theoretician and as a designer, was a work uh, titled The Nightscape of the City, a programmable kinetic uh, installation he produced for the 1968 Milan Triennial in Italy. In an undated uh, typescript uh, I found in the Triennale archives in Milan, Kepesh described his work uh, displayed at the Palazzo dell'Arte as follows, uh, uh, quote, My piece can be best described as a projected picture. It gives a fleeting glimpse uh, of the richness of our modern urban landscapes, a common focus produced by accidental configurations of basically random individual efforts, unquote. A very similar work, but uh, two decades later, was installed at the Harvard Square in Cambridge in an underground bus ter terminal and was titled Blue Sky on the Red Line, uh, and it was completed in the spring of 1985. It stood and still stands at the stop where passengers could transfer from the subway at Harvard uh, to local, local and intercity uh, bus buses below street level at the point where buses enter and re-enter the single lane tunnel from the outside. Kepesh's idea here was to bring the natural light, uh, meaning the, the blue sky uh, in the title, uh, underground. The red stripe illuminating would uh, signal and indicate the arrival of the buses uh, for the passengers, meaning that Kepesh's concept had also a functional uh, character, not just uh, an aesthetic uh, quality. So it is, uh, it is misfortune that Kepesh's dreams uh, to marry art uh, to the sciences happened at the same moment when uh, the desired equilibrium was at stake. In 1967, when Kepesh's Center for Advanced Visual Studies was opened, the student uh, protests, which uh, extensified in the wake of the Vietnam War, 
reached the campus uh, of the MIT, overshadowing the real purpose of uh, his in initiative by the militaristic uh, overtone of the very word technology. In fact, a shelter for the humanities of, uh, at MIT in the epicenter of the industrial military complex, where technology was converted to serve human purposes, was part of Kepesh's concept if, uh, in unifying the opposites. I would argue that uh, to create a revolution, social change, uh, with the help of art in order to inform and educate people, to increase their knowledge through aesthetics, through visual art, uh, that was uh, Kepesh's driving force in all of his endeavors. So no wonder why uh, Kepesh uh, titled one of uh, his most important book series, Vision and Value, uh, but, but my question is uh, uh, whether vision and value uh, synonyms. Uh, do they have a mutual relationship uh, with, uh, with each other? In Kepesh's center at MIT, participation and collaboration became a substitute term for, for, for unity. You can only bring va value uh, to the world uh, if you have a vision, but that vision could be brought alive in a more convincing, comprehensive, let's say, valuable way uh, if you are teaming up with others. One of the last and most successful exhibitions Kepesh was involved in uh, during his affiliation with MIT was the piece uh, called Center Beam uh, that uh, I already re referred to you at the beginning of my paper when I showed you a, side, uh, a slide from the title <coughs> sequence of a film that documented this unusual, unusual work. It was a 144-foot uh, long uh, outdoor interactive media sculpture combined water prisms, uh, holography, and art on neon line uh, encased in a glass tube, an ice line, and laser projections on steam clouds, along with uh, poetry being heard from loudspeakers. The piece was built for the uh, sixth documentary in Kassel, Germany, in 1977, and a year later uh, it was also exhibited in the National Mall in Washington, D.C. Center beam was uh, conceived as being an aqueduct, aqueduct, uh, aqueduct uh, in between urban and uh, natural environment. Kepesh uh, submitted an image to be redrawn in laser light. The picture he chose was uh, that of an unopened envelope titled To Whom It May Concern, after his painting by the same name. It appeared uh, three-dimensionally three -dimensionally, uh, as it was projected on the hazy, cloud-like sub substance looming above uh, the structure. This virtual, unreachable uh, letter symbolically conjured up the title of the book uh, by his MIT colleague uh, Norbert Wiener, uh, the father of cybernetics, uh, to whom it may concern, that uh, served as uh, the reference point in uh, communication theory, suggesting that the, ma uh, the mass-mediated world, consisting of signals, actually every, uh, actually every op object or event, from a plant to an organism, as, uh, as Norbert Wiener uh, put it, may be viewed uh, a myriad of to whom it may concern, uh, concern messages. Kepesh uh, shared uh, the belief uh, that these signals, these messages, can only possess a value if they could be arranged into the right optical configuration, representing the word composed through their fragments, such as uh, his work also, uh, was also part of a larger entity, a single element of a larger piece that was produced uh, collaboratively. To describe this uh, figuratively, we might need to employ the phrase that uh, Gestalt uh, scientists favor to say, the whole is always larger than the sum of the parts. Thank you very much. Great. It was on the spot, one hour, 60 minutes. Thank you, thank you, Martin. Uh, uh, it's, it's amazing to see all of these, um, I guess, references that we take for granted. Um, in our in our kind of practice as media artists, uh, and they they uh, it's great to see kind of the origins and also some of the context in which they 
uh, you presented here. I, I have a question about about the, the kind of complicated balance, and we'll see more of this in the film tomorrow, when you, you have a lot of interviews with people and they're talking about what the, the situation was like at MIT. So here, here is Kepesh as a designer, uh, artist, holding a, a position in an institution that during the post-Sputnik era was kind of highly directed towards military innovation and te technology at the service of military innovation. Um, do you have any sense of how he kind of managed that very complex balancing act kind of between being at MIT as opposed to refusing to be at MIT and, right. and, um, and, and managing to maintain this research lab and being able to um, connect with, with people on, on, you know, on the kind of technological military side. Right. Yes, uh, I think Kepesh, uh, I mean, based on my, my research, based on my findings, uh, he, really uh, he really struggled. To, uh, to establish the center. I mean, he came up with this idea already uh, at the end of the 40s. You know, uh, He got to MIT in 1945, uh, just after uh, the end of the Second World War, and um, he was always dreaming uh, about uh, like a visual research center. But the problem with MIT was, you know, that um, I don't know uh, here, but uh, MIT is a, is, a, is a scientific institution, and only uh, the architectural faculty is the only one which uh, uh, had you know, some uh, affiliation with, uh, with the arts. And Kepesh was, uh, uh, was the first artist, the first painter. Actually, he, was a he always referred to himself as a painter, uh, not a media artist, you know? uh, even though he was a designer, he was a, uh, he was a, a Photographer, you know, we, we know his uh, uh, work uh, uh, the best as a as a photographer. Uh, if you go to uh, like uh, Google his name, uh, only his uh, photographic images uh, would uh, would appear. Um, but um, so he was uh, he was very lucky that he had uh, James Killian, uh, you know, this this person I I uh, I refer to you in my presentation. Who was serving the the president of uh, of MIT in the, that time when Kepesh, uh, Kepesh uh, got there? Actually, he uh, had uh, this. Um, uh, so he was invited because of his first book, his 1944 book, *The Language of Vision*, which became a textbook for designers. So that was one of the first book uh, on uh, on on, uh, uh, on image as a, as a, as a concept. You know. Uh, it's a very early book, and uh, I think we are now in the 15th, 20th edition of, 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 the, of that book. So it was. I I I, I also met somebody in uh, in uh, 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 an artist art art and art historian uh, in in Germany from from Iran from Tehran, and he he said that. In, in Tehran, you know, uh, they are learning from Kepesh's book. You know, that's the most important book, you know, for learning design. So it uh, it really uh, uh, gave Kepesh uh, uh, a confidence mm -hmm. how you know he can maybe make a change uh, mm -hmm. at, at at MIT, you know, and bring arts uh, to the humanities uh, for uh, for the scientists. And um, and the the, part, the problem was, you know, the 50, early fifties. So Kepesh. Kepesh had a communist background uh, mm -hmm. uh, in, in Europe, and he was also part of a, a communist uh, uh, group in Chicago. So during the McCartney era, you know, he was uh, he was almost uh, you know uh, he, he had to almost leave MIT because of that. So Kilian was the who uh, you just mentioned the Sputnik program. So so this guy uh, was the scientific advisor of Eisenhower. And he was hired uh, by by the Pentagon, you know, how to cope with the Russians <laughs> in the Cold War era. 
So he was a, he was a main Cold War figure, and he was also a Sunday Sunday painter. Okay. So he had uh, he was a very bad painter, but uh, but at least you know he could uh, have some conversation with Capes about art, and he uh, he was he he facilitated you know uh, even though he re retired by the time Capes was able to create in the uh, middle of the 60s the Center for Advanced Visual Studies, he was still alive and he uh, had this teacher. You know, and he was able to uh, secure some funding, you know, some, some sponsorship. And this is also, of course, also a contradiction that uh, Kepeshi Center was founded by all these um, uh, big, uh, uh, you know, contractors, these companies, you know, that also funded the military and uh, the missile research and, uh, and were the backing up the military industrial complex at, uh, at MIT. So Kepesh, uh, but, but he obviously didn't have any other choice, you know. If, uh, and he, the, the center was, was uh, that's why it's, it's called center, because the center is at, the, I don't know if here, I, I really don't know the, the structure, you know, the hierarchy here in the United States, but the centers are independent research institutes. So even though uh, his center was affiliated to the School of Architecture Planning, uh, it uh, worked as, a, as an independent uh, research uh, institute. And Kepesh's idea was to uh, invite uh, uh, established artists as fellows and to, uh, to just uh, uh, bring together some ideas, you know, and to, to participate. So I, that's why I, I refer to collaboration as, a, as a main, the main idea, you know. Because uh, because Kepesh, uh, that's, that's, and that this brings uh, to another question that you may uh, want to ask: Why Kepesh is an un still an unknown figure uh, in the in the world of media art? Um, because because he he was one of the first who believed in teamwork and group work, you know. Because most most artists are egocentric and they don't want to uh, work uh, together with with other artists, uh, and that was uh, also a problem. So. I found a lot of a lot of statements, a lot of letter, letters and correspondence, highlighting the fact, you know, how hard it was for for artists, uh, for those fellows, Kepesh uh, hired, uh, to work uh, together on certain projects. For example, on the Center B projects, uh, at the document that, that I showed a few uh, slides from. I don't know if this answered answered your good. question. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, thank you. That was really great. Uh, I wanted to, to uh, ask a little more about the role that uh, architecture at MIT played uh, with this observation that uh, the Media Lab starts in 1985, but it actually grows out of the architecture machine group of uh, Nicholas Negroponte, which also starts in 1967 uh, as, as a, a Center for Advanced Visual Studies starts. And they're both connected, obviously, to architecture. And so, uh, well, I, I've seen uh, the trailer for the film, so I know that Negroponte is actually interviewed. But I thought if you, you might be able to, to articulate a little more about both uh, how both of these things grow out of architecture as it was then, and then what relationship they had. Because clearly, they, they must have known each other and interacted yes. quite a bit. Yes, I mean, this, this could be a, uh, a topic or a subject of another talk, because uh, because this uh, this comes up very often, you know mm -hmm. this uh, this uh, this collision. Because it was it was uh, uh, Michael Nymark, uh, who uh, oh, you, you, Michael. you know, yeah, uh, he has a he has a his, his, he's published an article that's available online, the 1980 blow, that was the title of of his of his text. Um, and but because he was also affiliated to CIVS and also uh, Media Lab. So he might be the best person, you know, to um, to get uh, to get his to get his idea of mm -hmm. what happened. And uh, the thing is, uh, you know, that uh, the art Mac was always uh, um, and uh, when when it, when it started, you know, it was uh, more research based. When Marianne Amashi and, and others, you know, were were, were still there, but then it became like. A, a, like a, almost like a tech uh, company, you know, that had a lot of uh, uh, money for from DARPA as well, you know. So it's a uh, bit it, um, 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 it, it became a, like a commercial, uh, mm -hmm. it commercial commercialized in a, in a way. 
and uh, and uh, uh, the contradiction is now that uh, so C capital C ABS uh, doesn't exist anymore. Um, it has this successor of uh, ACT programming art, culture, and technology uh, that was created in uh, 2009. Um, you know, as also part of the uh, School of Architecture and Planning, but it's, it's just a program. It's uh, and it's uh, contradiction is that they. They are, so CIVS uh, is housed in the same building, the, the Media Lab building, which was designed by IMP, you know, this huge building, but they have only like a, a small corridor. And uh, the, 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 the other part of the building is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's part of uh, Media Lab. And, um, and you know, Negroponte, Negroponte was uh, Kepesh, uh, uh, so he studied with Kepesh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. architecture. So, uh, they were they were really uh, good uh, good uh, friends as well, uh, but the problem was that why Kapesh was able to uh, get sponsorship for his center, uh, Kapesh had to uh, Kapesh forced to retire. So it was different than we were just talking about this with uh, George in the car uh, that uh, here in the U.S. now you can be a professor for forever, but it was a different policy, or maybe MIT had a different policy in the 70s. So. So even though Kepesh uh, just, uh, uh, you know, established his center in the end of the 60s, he was forced to retire in uh, 74. Actually, he, he had to, uh, he should have uh, retired in 72, but he got two years plus, you know, uh, because he was Kepesh. Uh, but, um, but the problem was that uh, Odo Pina, you know, this German uh, artist who was part of the Zero uh, movement, the Zero group, uh, uh, and also a, a fine kinetic artist, he, he became the next director, the second director. And he had uh, no uh, sense, no idea how to, uh, how to canvas uh, money, you know, uh, because he, uh, he, used the, he used mainly the, the center for, uh, for backing up his own projects, you know, and he was not that uh, collaboratively uh, motivated uh, in the same sense that Kepesh was. Um, and um, and um, and the media actually the original concept of media lab in the in the early uh, 80s would have uh, also involved uh, the, the CIVS. So the original idea was the, that uh, one floor uh, would have been CIV dedicated to CIVS and the other four floor to media lab. But I think it was connected to Jerome Wiesner, uh, who was the uh, president of that time and who was a personal friend of, uh, of uh, Negroponte that, uh, uh, that they, uh, they had like a falling out, you know, with, with, uh, with Otto Pina. Otto Pina uh, wanted to have um, New York based artists, you know, just uh, 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 coming to MIT uh, and, uh, and uh, getting uh, this fellowship. So, it was a very, very complicated uh, situation, and I think it's, uh, it was mainly uh, personal, you know, that, uh, that uh, uh, Negroponte was able to just uh, uh, get into the, that, that huge building, and, uh, and uh, basically CIVS was expelled, you know, because CIVS existed in, a, uh, in one floor uh, of the media, uh, of the MIT Museum, which was uh, which is not even on campus, but. Uh, but uh, a couple of blocks, blocks away at uh, Massachusetts Avenue. So, but, but uh, yeah, so it was, it was also like a confrontation uh, between the Boston art world, the New York art world, uh, the, the, the artist, you know, the happy artist, uh, the angry artist, uh, the, the, the tech, the, the, all these tech companies, you know, which just emerged you know, in, the, in, the, in the early, Early 80s, you know, like uh, computer technology, uh, like the Mar Marvin Minsky's, you know, artificial artificial intelligence lab became uh, more and more um, important, and I think that's why. Uh, and and uh, and the other thing is that uh, that the MIT administration uh, wanted to uh, kind of um, uh, suppress humanity uh, in the in the 80s. So it was, uh, I don't know if you remember that uh, uh, end of 70s, early 80s, that was the oil, oil crisis. So I think um, they, they wanted to uh, strength, uh, strengthen, strengthen the, the technology.
technology in the expense of, uh, of uh, humanities again. You know, it was different the time in, in the 1960s. So it was, uh, so this, this uh, media art program, programs was also in the air in the mid of, uh, mid of 60s. So that, that's, that's how uh, Kapesh's ideas were also you know, embraced more in the 60s. So probably in the, in the seven, end of 70s, early 80s, he uh, wouldn't be able to, to, to uh, make uh, CIBS uh, happen. Um, so I think it has, so it, 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 it is a very interesting story it's about, about yeah. why uh, this happened and how it, it, it happened. Um, but, but now, you know, uh, Media Lab is, 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 like, uh, is like a whole industry. By CIBS, uh, you know, having like um, three, uh, three, four fellows a year, um, and uh, this just a uh, uh, teach. And the other fact is, you know, that Kapesh's center uh, would work, as I mentioned, an independent uh, like uh, uh, enterprise. Uh, but uh, because uh, there were always a lack of funding, they had to teach in, in Otto Pina's time. So during Kapesh's time, there were no teaching. They, they, artists were only focus, uh, focusing on their research. So 50% uh, teamwork and 50% individual work. That was the share uh, during Kapesh's time. But uh, during Otto, Otto Pino's time, so during the second uh, director's time, uh, artists had to teach, you know. Uh, they had to, uh, they just uh, started to, uh, you know, have, having this uh, media arts uh, program and uh, they were affiliated with the uh, architecture uh, department and uh, and they had they had to contribute something you know uh, in, act, in exchange you know to to get uh, the center financial sec financially secured. Thank you. That's great. Do you want to say Because you went to MIT. Yeah, I was there. <laughs> um, well, this is a different story, but uh, you know what? I, I'm sure you come up. Uh, 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 Piece of, to this piece of information, but Jack Burnham was the first fellow of the CABS, right? And well, not, the, not the first, but he was among the first. I think he was, yeah, that's, I think he was the first. Not the first. No? No, he was on the second wave. Second Who was wave. the first? Uh, the first fellow was uh, actually um, Otto, Otto, Pina, Otto, Otto Pina, you know, uh, he was the first fellow, and um, and uh, there was uh, the Tokis, you know, the Greek sculptor, and mm -hmm. Ben Ying Tsai, the, the Chinese-American uh, cybernetic sculptor, uh, Stan, Stan Fender Beek, who, uh, you know, yeah, is film. a fine filmmaker and video uh, artist and also computer uh, artist. Um, they call it inaugural, not first, you're right. Inaugural, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, he was he was early. He was early. He was he was there in uh, in 1969. Yes. He spent one year uh, of writing his uh, uh, sec the second book, second book which uh, was published after Beyond Modern Sculpture. So Beyond Modern Sculpture was published before, and because Kapesh liked that book, uh, Beyond Modern Sculpture, that's why he offered him a fellowship. Mm -hmm. But uh, but Burnham didn't really like uh, what's what's going on in, in, uh, at the center. So he he was the most critical fellow. He was the most critical fellow, and he heavily criticized uh, all the projects uh, of Kapesh. Mm -hmm. So, for example, this uh, Kapesh had this, uh, you will see tomorrow, uh, these uh, huge uh, searchlights uh, that he uh, put just at the harbor, uh, Boston Harbor. And, um, and that Kapesh, you know, he, uh, he used these uh, uh, ideas uh, to convince, uh, you know, the companies to, to just support the center, uh, but, but uh, Jack didn't uh, really under, understood that concept and uh, he just criticized Kapesh that all, all he's doing, all the exhibitions and works are paper-based, so conceptual, um, and that he didn't uh, go to, to the, like, you know, the uh, Navy administration or I don't know uh, where you can collect these uh, permits, you know, uh, to because because these search uh, beams uh, obviously uh, you know, were uh, uh, giving a hard time for the Logan Airport, you know, or would have given a hard time for Logan Airport, you know, because 
because uh, this enor enormous light installation uh, at the harbor, you know, it was uh, it uh, 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 for Kepesh had uh, you know a, a, an aesthetic aesthetic purpose, of course. But uh, Jack Burnham criticized Kepesh that he didn't really, um, you know, sort of looked for uh, uh, and, and, uh, and, and brought to the administration uh, like a proper control, way to control control, over controlling the light space. So the because it would have been affected, you know, the the, the flight uh, uh, if you would put like a, a light installation just at the harbor. Because the, is, the airport was too close, you know. And this is in literature but, but or in letters. The one you no, no. About. Uh, these, these, uh, he published this. I mean, he wrote an article, wrote uh, an article uh, uh, in retrospect. Uh, I think in end of the seventies or mm -hmm. or or, or eighties. Um, and he he also um, there. He, I, I also came across with some letters when Jack Burnham uh, curated the uh, uh, software exhibition software. at the Jewish Museum. And uh, he he was criticizing. Uh, I mean, that, that was the time. So the software exhibition happened in 1970, and Jack Burnham was uh, when he uh, was conducting research for the for the software show. He was at Kapashi Center. Mm -hmm. So by just looking at uh, those letters, you know, uh, uh, connected to the software show, you you can also have some sense. You know, what happened uh, uh, during the. Uh, Time at the center. Yes, well, it's a fascinating history. This one, it's great that you know. The interesting part is also there were books written like the Second Modernism and so on, but this is not so much in it. I mean, no, it's there, no, no, but not because yeah, the, the, the problem is that the problem is you know that uh, that Kepesh is uh, so Kepesh is there, there's no no. Uh, just one archive, you know, and, M and MIT was not interested to uh, purchase Kapesh's papers. So the problem was that uh, for three, four years, uh, the estate, Kapesh's estate, housed at Ars Library, which is a second-hand bookshop in, Boston, in downtown Boston. But uh, but MIT was not interested to purchase the paper, Kapesh's paper. So it was Stanford uh, here in California, Stanford University. Uh, which uh, purchased the whole aircraft, you know, um, and uh, but this is the, that that is all, all, only you know uh, like maybe fifty percent of 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 uh, of, uh, of uh, paper based uh, uh, resources that that we have, but his uh, archive is uh, really scattered, you know, uh, all over the place. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was uh, you know it took fifteen years just to collect everything piece by piece. Um, and nobody else did that, so <laughs> I think I have the, the only like, comprehension. I, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, say comprehension because nothing can be comprehension. But uh, but because he was, uh, he had very uh, his his life, his body of work is so complex, you know. Um, just just uh, only uh, inventorizing his paintings, you know, that that would could could take uh, ages. And then he did media works. He did a lot of writings. He has this wonderful unpublished book on light art. That is that would be my next uh, project uh, to to publish an unfinished uh, book manuscript that he started to write in 1930 in Berlin, together with Laszlo Mohorinagi. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and he was working uh, on this project together with his students at MIT in the uh, 60s, 70s. And all the all the textual uh, material and all the, uh, the image material is there at, uh, at Stanford University. So um, you can you can just edit edit it. Uh, you know, uh, put some like uh, references, footnotes, maybe extend it a little bit. You know, uh, up until contemporary light art, and uh, you, you can get a like a thick volume on uh, on the on the creative use of light, you know, light in science, light in art, light in religion, light in culture, uh, uh, everything that's connected to, to light. So Kepesh was really, uh, he, he was really interested in every every images, you know. I, I just went to Stanford uh, the other day and I, I just came up across with, uh, I don't know, maybe 100 boxes just with slides, you know. He was, he was taking slides, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe we have uh, 50,000, 100,000 slides, you know, 
um, and he arranged these you know, on uh, certain iconographical subjects. And he, he used his own slides uh, uh, for lectures as well, you know, at, uh, at MIT and also for public uh, for public lectures. So he was he was interested in any kind of media uh, that were connected to, uh, op to the optical, uh, you know, image and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and light art was one of his, his favorite media. Um, so um, there are still a lot of potentials, you know, to, to explore. Uh, his activity. Um, I was delighted that you began with uh, the word theory and explaining that it means view. Uh, and and I, I've, uh, I'm Greek and I know ancient Greek and I know all these things. So in addition to that, uh, it connects to other words like theology, for example, and, and theos, which is God, it simply means that entity which has overview, this sort of ability to see from above, which of course then if you understand the word, you, you realize why the connection to Plato would be there and, and all the things that you began with. Elsewhere, and I think it's also in the film that we're going to watch tomorrow in the documentary, uh, there are connections of Kepesh talking about quantum physics, for example, or connecting that. Could you speak to that, the, the sort of connection between the sort of ancient philosophical awareness uh, that is apparently right into the dialogues and then this other awareness of contemporary science, which, uh, you know, quantum physics is still new to many of us. Uh, it's not that new in the end, but you know, to most people it's new. But in his time it was a much newer, it was a much more uh, radical proposition that an artist would be keeping abreast of. Uh, any, anything about that would be really nice. Yeah, I mean, uh, so Kepes was surrounded with, with, with scientists, so he picked up you know, a lot of, uh, lot of uh, theories you know, uh, along the way. Um, but uh, you know, philosoph philosoph philosophical point of view, um, I think the most important thing uh, that he, uh, what he, uh, he had with what helped him to realize, you know, that uh, what why science is so important is that he um, he had a this gnostic background. So his uh, his uncle uh, back in Hungary was uh, head of this neo gnostic uh, movement, you know. Um, so that's why that's how that's why light I think because the, 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 to him light was uh, not like not, not just having this purity, but light was the ultimate uh, like uh, energy uh, of uh, of knowledge as well you know what uh, what what unifies us. Mm -hmm. So so Gnostics you know mm -hmm. they try to, they try to find a common denom denominator you know how to unify. Uh, everything in, in nature. So that's that's, and, and, and I think this concept of uh, uh, this, uh, this this unifying you know uh, entity between art and science. You know that uh, the, the natural scientists and humanistic scientists should be in one entity. Uh, I think that's uh, that's come that's that derives from this notion. Uh, from so he would have studied that or or discussed it with his uncle. Or it would have been in the yes, yes. I mean, I, I found some some letters, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, and the, the 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 whole beauty of this, you know, that this all these things are really imbued. Uh, so if you uh, Kepesh had a uh, Kepesh had a notebook, you know, uh, from very early on up, up until uh, he he passed away, <coughs> uh, he also used sketches for his paintings and, and media works in it. But but also he it's like a palimpsest of, of writing you know mm -hmm. so there are like like, uh, like some sentences which doesn't really make any sense you know some words uh, he used uh, but he always referred to uh, to back you know what what happened with him in his childhood what happened with him like uh, 30 years before and then if you just read uh, together uh, read together the lines and uh, you, you just uh, want to make sense of them. Uh, it would uh, it would create an alternative history, you know, mm -hmm. what was in his mind, you know, uh, how he connected these, uh, these things together. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really it's really fascinating, you know, that uh, that he he never told about his past, you know, uh, not not uh, not even in, in uh, close uh, family, uh, you know, uh, for his uh, family members, but he he did this uh, this. Had his these references in his his, his notebooks, um, and and he also um, he he used metaphors, you know, uh, but when he was uh, talking to scientists, you know, he he was not interested in the in the in the science per se, 
you know, but he uh, always uh, tried to combine uh, these, you know, just in a metaphoric level, uh, and uh, and uh, and just uh, try to uh, uh, implement some ideas from from the science to his uh, to his artworks in a very in a in a, in a very emblematic, very meta metaphorical metaphorical level. So, for example, tomorrow you will you will have some sense of, of this uh, kind of thinking in my film, how he was encountered, for example, with, uh, with, uh, with Niels Bohr, you know, that he, he had a, uh, he invited uh, Niels Bohr over, you know, for dinner and uh, what he were uh, talking about and how, how his, uh, uh, his, uh, um, uh, his thinking, uh, in science was inspired Kepesh, but but uh, you, you can't directly translate this. You uh, Kepesh only used uh, some certain aspects, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, he thought that it it could be uh, somehow implemented to his to his to his, uh, to his artworks. And this kind of uh, uh, you know opposites, this kind of dual uh, formations uh, were really really important to uh, to him. Uh, you know, it's um, for example. Um, uh, he so he, he uh, often just uh, cut out some some uh, some scientific uh, like images from from books and try to uh, you know juxtapose them uh, with uh, that I showed some examples of this but there are many many uh, mm -hmm. other examples uh, you know uh, so you're Greek or Italian Greek Greek, Greek. okay. Uh, Yes, I mean, and, and you know, in uh, in that uh, sense, uh, for example, just not, not to talk to uh, other artists, not uh, not just uh, other scientists, was very inspirational for him. For example, he has this uh, hundred-page long dialogue with Takis, Vasilakis Takis. Takis. Right. So Takis was also inspired by uh, from from Kepesh, and, and Kepesh also inspired. Uh, you know, uh, through this conversation he had uh, with, with Takis, you know, this, this electromagnetic field, you know, that was in, uh, embedded in, in, in Takis' art, was, was in a philosophical level also quite uh, important to, to, to Kepler, even though he, he didn't use uh, or didn't implement the magnetic force that much, you know, in his, in his artworks than, than Takis did. Martin, um, so we're, we've run out of time. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for all the comprehensive uh, information we've received. If you can, please come tomorrow to the to the film. It's at seven o'clock at the Poland Theater. It's a documentary film that has uh, quite an extensive uh, collection of people who who can uh, describe. Uh, and in fact, it's kind of interesting in, in the way that, that uh, you get a kind of mental picture of who Kepesh was through all of these various uh, descriptions. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.